it gives me great pleasure, great joy to introduce to you to this morning one of our favorites, Barry Lindhart. Barry, come on up. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. Did you guys enjoy the worship? Should we just stay there? Yeah. You know, one of the things that uh, you have to praise until you worship, you worship until the, the glory fills the room. And uh, one of the powerful things that I'm learning from he, God himself, is understanding the fullness of that. Um, I think I've got the praise and the worship figured out. Getting to worship the glory is the jump. And it's getting a company of people that will actually realize that you are intended to be the fullness of who he is. If God is actually your permanent address, then you will get the benefits of who he is by residing, he residing in you. It's not that God, rele or God um, holds back his glory just to make sure that I'm the only one that gets it. He wants to say, yeah, we're friends. Let's, I'm going to share this with you. And hear me right in that. It's, it's not that you mingle his, his position as Father God and you know, the, the reverence of who he is, but he actually loves to be dad and show off, and just like any good father would do with any good son or daughter, he wants to, hey, let's have some fun. I want to fill the fullness of this house. Listen to how he speaks. I'm going to fill this house with glory. Well, if he's in me, then whose house is he in? He's in my house. And so you'll see the expression of that in the days ahead. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'll, you know, I'll prophesy to you that this house will be filled with his glory to the point where you actually will see it. It's not something that is, you know, always meant for things of old. No, no, no. If he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, then I've got news for you. It's not going to change. It's going to get only exceedingly more powerful as we go ahead. Because if you're trying to re restore revival, that's a glory that's fading. Glory to glory is progressive. That was really good, Dr. B. Anyway, and so it's not, you know, I hear all the time, and I said this last time I was here, and I probably will continue to say it until the realization of the fullness of what God wants to do amongst us is that he wants us to express the fullness of him. He's not trying to be king, you're my slave, king, you're my, put in the blank, it's you're my friend. So powerfully that it actually resides in you. So that's what I said on Thursday. Why in the world are we trying to jump out of this house that God resides in to jump into his house when he's already in my house? I mean, if you think about it for a minute, that's a crazy thought to try to think that way. Why would you want to jump out of your house to this thing called death in order to get to his house that he calls life? And he's going, no, I'm going to jump into your house. Here's one for you. Have you ever considered that if I am the resurrection and the life? Yes. Though you believe it and die, to you I'm resurrection. But if he says this, if you believe it and you live it, you will never die. Do you believe this? Woo, that's a jump there, people, because we always have this idea that I got to have death to get to heaven. Well, wait a minute now, if heaven's already inside of you, we're, you're sounding weird, dude. You are just crazier than a $3 bill. I'd say two, well, you already had those. Three. Anyway, <laughs> when you start thinking that way, you just go, you know what? I, I'm, I'm not trying to get off this planet. That is not my goal. And, and the fact is, is that the reality of the chaos around me gives me the, the privilege to bring his dominion to it. Most people are using this confusion and writing their books and their little, you know, he, you know it wasn't 88 reasons in 1988 why Jesus is coming back. And you've heard that a thousand times. Now it's 2024 and anytime soon because it sounds like war. And Hey, I got news for you. And Matthew says, hey, there's going to be rumors of wars and famines and earthquakes. He goes, I'm dropping you into that. Not get out of here. Like I said, I think it was on Thursday, I said this also. I'm a little wound up from worship, so I'm sorry. Um, when you realize that the more mature we are in the house of the Lord, you'll see the, the fading thought of trying to get out of here is going to go away. You're not going to try to escape. What people are saying now, it's time to escape, but there's no dominion. And God's going, no, I'm not coming for that. God only rests on what he looks like. I'll say that again. Okay, I'm just going to park right there for a second. God only rests on what looks like himself. That's why the glory is going to manifest, because he's only going to, when he sees the fullness of himself, that's when he'll come. 
Not the glory of what death is doing, but what the glory of life is doing. So when you realize that, you're going, wait, wait, I need to shift my brain. Yeah, yes, you do. You do. There's a lot of people that wrote a lot of books that we should have been gone a long time ago. And the reality is we're coming into the most powerful seasons that are on this earth, and the earth itself is either even travailing. And it's like, you know what? No kidding, it's going to have an earthquake. It's shaking. It's going, where are the sons? Where's the daughters? Where are they? Because the earth was made to be managed by you. All right, well... That's pretty good. I thought it was pretty good. Anyway, what I want to do is, you know, as I was talking on Thursday and kind of build off that a little bit, I want to talk a little bit about God's faith and the character of faith. Because we have a lot of, I think, misconcepts about the value of a divine mind. And um, if you have a wrong framework, I think a lot of us have, because there's, we've been taught, at least I, was, I went through this era where it's all about you got to get faith. How do you do it? Well, you hear God's voice. Hearing, you know, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But when you put, if faith is actually a person, then say, faith is what? Faith is it's going to increase by hearing. Well, if you turn that into Jesus, it's going to increase by you hearing him. That's how your faith is going to, because you're spending time with him, not trying to get a formula to have you be heard. God doesn't need your faith to be a better God. God doesn't need your worship to be a better God. God is God all by himself. The reason we worship is because you become whatever you worship. So you realize, well, how about that, people? <laughs> you, mean, you mean that God's going to be God all by himself and he's not going to be better because I applied my faith to him, he gets to be a better God? No, he's going to be the same. And so you begin to realize there's some stuff here that, you know what? Jesus is God's persuasion of you. I'm going to say it again. Jesus is God's persuasion of you. What he had to do is he brought Jesus in the redemptive clause to, or the framework of that, to bring him to life. But you have to realize, like I said on Thursday, Jesus didn't come to go to the cross to make you a friend. He came to the cross because you were already his friend. That's a mind blower, people, because it took one of the Trinity to restore you. So what does that equal to you too? Joint heir. So far, so good? Yeah. You guys all right? Yeah. <clears throat> because, see, you realize that the resurrection of, of Jesus is proof of mankind's redeemed innocence. Jesus' resurrection, when he raised, that was the proof of mankind's Um, redeemed innocence and you realize he did that for you to step into that innocence obviously when you ask him in and and to take that that position in him you know what john g lake used to say he said the difference between christ and and us was jesus understood who he was the difference between john g lake said this the difference between christ and us is that jesus understood who he was question is, is, do you understand who you are? Yes, you are. We all are getting there. Listen, the more we corporately come together and worship, the quicker you'll get there. Just a little drop of clue there. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. So, you know, if Jesus, if God is my permanent address, well, God, that means that God's already made his mind up about you. You need to make up your mind to equal what his mind is. This one-liner so far. I'm not even going to tell. I'm just kind of rambling right now. Just kind of, just kind of rambling, because here's reality: God found us in Christ before we were lost in Adam. God found us in Christ before we were lost in Adam, because the foundation, before the foundation of the world, He already found us. We were already. He found us before. Adam got lost. Sorry, people. God already chose us. Sorry. We were found in him before Adam got lost. That's a powerful statement. That's, that's, that's the beauty when you understand this pulpit, this man that is called Dr. Bob Cathers, understands righteousness. That's what's so powerful about it. You know, we, we say, well, I've heard that a thousand times. Well, good. You need to hear it a thousand times because you have to understand that God found you in him before Adam was lost. So that means you've got to understand, go back to righteousness. 
Please understand me. I, 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 I hear what people say we need the church to meet the needs of the people. Okay, stop right there. The church is not meant to meet needs. If you drive it by needs, the people will never mature. You have to allow yourself to grow into deeper things. If you're going to have deep moves of God, you're going to have deep teaching. You just can't be playing around with, and Jesus wept. You can't play with stuff like that. I mean, it's just like, okay, this little light of mine, okay. All the things that we hear, we got, and when somebody comes along and says, I want to go into deeper waters, if you want a deep move of God, you can't play in shallow waters. You've got to go to the framework that it requires to hold the depth and the, the gravity and the, the, the magnitude of what God wants to bring. And so I get you know, accused quite a bit about, well, you're way out there, Barry, you're just up in, over my head. No, I'm not. <laughs> You're underwater. You need to come up. You got to do something that's going to, you know, you know what? Just meet the reality of what he wants us to do. I'm going to read you something. See, God does not invite us into an inferior fellowship. He doesn't invite us into an inferior fellowship. He does not. Meaning, he doesn't go. Okay. Hey, I used to go to. I got to stop right there because this is this is. Used to just crack me up when I, I knew there's some things I, I learned. Has anybody ever learned as you go in life about God? You get, kind of get deeper and deeper in thinking. I remember one time I was going into this uh, this uh, interview, uh, kind of like to do some ministering. I had come back from Toronto back in the day and was moving in the spirit and brought it back. And I could, you know, wanted to just lay hands on people. And had anybody ever been to Toronto? You've been to the Toronto Blessing? Anybody was there over there? Where were you guys? I was waiting for you there. Anyway, so. It was a very powerful move. It was, um, it was, uh, it was uh, something that you need to experience. You, you just go, I don't, I, don't know if I, under, I don't know if I get that or not. But anyway, I'll just really quick. The Toronto Blessing was a big move that happened out of John Arnott's church. And uh, God came into this little church just like he's going to come into here. I'm just going to, you know, you don't have to go, and the Lord, and he says, uh, you don't have to say that. No, I'm just going to say, <laughs> he's coming. That's all you have to say. God says, Amen. See, when you get the word right, it's not you saying amen to God, it's when God says amen to you. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it's, it's just like, I just said, it's when he says amen. You, we should all wait for a minute and listen for God and say, is he going to say amen or not? But anyway, okay, I'm in my own world right now. Okay, we're back in Toronto. So I'm in Toronto, and also I get blasted by the Holy Ghost. I mean, I got blasted. I'm a pretty strong guy to challenge some of the things that I saw there, meaning the people up on the stage were talking about the Spirit, and I heard, I was sitting there, and I heard about the experiences when the Holy Spirit comes into a room that sounds like a freight train. Oh my gosh. I was sitting there, there's about 5,000 people there, and I'm sitting in my chair, and my buddy had gotten there a little, a day or two before me, and he says, you got to get up here, and, and I heard his voice going, ah, uh, you just to get up, and I go, what is wrong with you? Just to, what hit, what, are you crying? What's going, no, he goes, I'm, I'm trying to recover from last night, and he's just shaking, ah, uh, and I'm just going, Oh, dude, that's weak. I mean, come on, be a man up, dude. Just, what, what's going on? He goes, you'll see. That's what he said. That's how it ended. You'll see. So I go up there, fly into Canada, get all situated and sit in the meeting, and there's people gathering. There's all these people. Sit down. I look at my buddy over there, had talking on the phone, and he's shaking like this still, hanging on the chair. Uh, I'm just going, wow, dude, just take it down a few notches. I'm going to have to move. Anyway. <laughs> So I'm sitting there, and these guys get up on the stage. They start talking. It wasn't John Arnott. It was a different speaker he had there. And he had two people that came up there. And uh, this guy goes up, and he prays over these, this one dude, and he goes over. But he didn't go over only. His legs went up as he went over. <laughs> and I go, what? Praise for the gal. Same thing. What kind of anointing is that? The, it was a, that's the 90. That's called the 90 anointing. You've you got to be at 90 degrees. Now, it wasn't so strange that they just started like that. He preached for 45 minutes, and their legs were still straight like that. And I'm looking at that, and I'm going, I'm not listening to you, dude. I'm watching those people. How are they holding their legs like that for so long? And it was a, he was a smaller, shorter guy. And I thought, you know what? If they, he can do that to them, I want to see what he's got. So... Michael, stand up for a minute. So th this is him coming to me, and I said, so go put your hands on my shoulders. He comes to pray for me like this, and I go, okay, buddy, and I went just like this. <laughs> and he starts praying for me, and all of a sudden, I just start shaking like this, and we're both shaking, and I held on, held on, and all of a sudden, boom, it hits both of us, and we do a bam, down just like that. And I, I jump right back up, and I go, 
whoa, that's pretty good. What's wrong with you? <laughs> He's still down there. So I go to the next guy that's running around. He was up on the stage, and I saw him leave because he was part of the prayer team. And uh, he comes and he, no, it's a woman. A woman came up to me first. That's what it was. A woman comes up to me, does the same thing. And I thought, if you got it, let's see if you got it. Bring it. So I did the same thing. I put my hands on her shoulder, and we start shaking it. Bam! She's, we just hit the ground. What I'm doing, I'm wiping out the ministry team. That's what I'm doing. They, they go down. I get back up again. So I start, well, I go, man, that's just a trip. And there's people now down all over the place. I mean, they're all over the place. They can't, their heads, one of the phenomena is they couldn't get the, their heads off the floor. They tried to get up, and they couldn't. It's like a magnet. And so these people are kind of trying to get up. I'm going, good luck with that. I got it fine. So I'm walking around, and this guy turns to me and goes, so you think you're pretty strong, huh? That's what he said to me. Caught my attention. I go, yeah, I'm okay. And he goes, where are you from? I go, I'm from Portland. He goes, oh, I, 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 I think I, he said, I mean, I'm from Eugene, Oregon. Oh, okay, I know where you're from. He goes, you mind if I pray for you? He just puts his hands on me and go, wham. I mean, like a, wow, bam, out like, just in two seconds, just down, and I'm laying there, and I go, all of a sudden, my head's swirling, and I feel like I'm drunk. I don't, I've never been drunk, but I go, well, this must, yeah, let's, let's just park there. Oh, you've never been drunk? No, I've never been drunk, but this is probably what it feels like, and I just couldn't, I couldn't get up the ground, and all these people are starting to fall around me now, and I start army crawling. I'm going, I roll over on my stomach, and I go, I got, there's a wall between about here and where Tom's at, and I start on the ground. I'm going, I'm going to get to that wall. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so I don't know if you've ever been on a, around you know, a bunch of people laying on the floor flop around like fish, and you're, just kinda, and you're right at their face when you go by. That's weird. <laughs> and you're just trying to get there. So about 20 minutes later, I finally make it to the wall. And I prop myself on, I was sitting there like this, and I was just like, huh, that's wild. And I stayed there until I was one of the last guys to leave. I said, God, if this is really you, I want everything you're doing here. I'm not going to leave until everybody else leaves. I'm going to make sure I get the thing. So a phenomenon had happened before I left. I was, uh, some people had pro gone up to Toronto prior for me to go in there. And um, what happened was is they had come back and they prayed for me. And I thought, oh, I went down really fast like Again, this is before I went up to Toronto. They'd come back and pray for me. I go down, and I'm on the ground, and all of a sudden, my tongue starts tingling. And I'm sitting on the floor, and I'm going, what's up with that? What's with my tongue? And the pastor's daughter, who was, I don't know, she's probably 30-some and has a family, and she's laying there, and I looked at her, and I go, is your tongue tingling by any chance? She goes, no. And I go, excuse me. Excuse me. Like, she thought I was weird. And um, interesting enough, when I said that, God said, I'm anointing your mouth. I said, okay. So I said that to say this. I get up to leave. This is one of the evenings I was getting up to leave. And again, I'm one of the last ones out of there. There's, there's thousands of people there, thousands. And there's this one lady sitting there in this chair. She's bent over, and she's kind of got... Her arm's kind of like this, and she's just going, it is the weirdest thing. I go, and of course, by this time, I'm shaking like everybody else. Uh, what's going on? And she goes, my tongue is tingling. And she's going, I go, would you like me to tell you what that means? She goes, ha, I would. I says, you've been anointed prophetically to release the word of God. And when I said that, she shot back two rows, man, just wham. Bam! You know what I did? See you later. <laughs> That's what I did. I just walked out because there's nothing you can do when God does something for you in that dimension. There's nothing you can do. Now, I said all that to say this. That's just my heart is to find God. But I find that a lot of people, I was in this, back to the meeting when I was going, hey, I was sitting there in front of a, you know, I was going to go minister because I brought this anointing back with me and I could just, I would literally just stand in front of people. And it would just, bam, the Holy Spirit would just come through and just go. But you had to be interviewed to get to that. I always remembered, now looking back at it, I understand what I was feeling when I first went to this church. Um, 
I was in the young adults, this was before I was married, but I went and met the youth pastor, and I went into his office, and the chair was way lower than the desk. Like, your knees come up between your face, and I'm just going around you. I go, what is this all about? I mean, it's, it's just like the superior, how you doing, I'm the youth pastor. I'm thinking, this is a dumb chair. That's all I'm thinking. But I realized that they were trying to be in hierarchy, I'm this, and you're this. And I'm thinking, that's not right. So I'm going to go back to, see, God does not in, invite us into an inferior fellowship. He doesn't do that. Um, but to the very, uh, very fellowship that he and his son enjoys for all of eternity. See, listen, an unhindered fellowship of perfect innocence with no suspicion or regret that he's done what he's done for you. You don't have to work your way up to be equivalent. Because the Spirit of Christ is exactly that. It doesn't amp more up. You may get more understanding of the Spirit of Christ, but you don't have to amp that thing up. The seed in Christ, everything that you ever get to get, it's, you've got it. It's over. It's in that seed. That seed knows what to do. You just got to be in the environment like we were in. Stay in that environment. That thing will excel. That will mature. That's where the, the value of what God says when you know, um, when I put the seed in you, it does require a certain environment to grow it. It does. Just like you can't grow pineapples in, in Alaska. Unless... God wants you to go up and violate natural laws. By the way, this kingdom is all supernatural. There is no logic in it. Please understand that. There is no logic. That is the hardest thing. You know why I say that? Because it's when logical things hit us, we go ape on God. Why do you allow that to happen? What's going on here? How come you could do that to me? Are you just doing this to make me feel little? What are you doing? You know, all the things that we do. Whether you're on the road to a mace or you watch Jesus be crucified, all of a sudden everything you learned from Christ and all the miracles you saw got shut down over an emotional event. It got shut down. And no people, most people don't want to talk about this because they want the miracles, they want the blessing, and God wants your relationship. He wants your friendship. He can do anything he wants at any given moment, but he's after the friendship thing. That's what he's after. You know, if you go through Luke's account, you'll see he healed lots and lots and lots of people. He doesn't even mention faith. It doesn't even mention it. It doesn't even mention it. And so we go big because somebody says, if I have just enough faith, I touch the cloak of his garment, we'll be made whole. Okay, anyway, moving into that reality, I'm just going, yeah, if you haven't heard Thursday, I'd go listen to Thursday and then come back and listen to this, if that's okay. I, I, that's, what I, that's what I recommend. So anyway, I'm going to say this, and I want to get into God's faith here for a moment, but what I was saying there is that the, the, that the resurrection of Jesus is proof of man's, mankind's redeemed innocent. The resurrection is proof that we're innocent. You just got to receive it. So far, so good? So, I'm going to go back to the foundation of a little bit about, just about being in Him in Ephesians 1. So, if you want to go there, you can follow me. If you want to bring your Bibles. Where's that page sound? Where's the sound effect? Where is it? There you go. Make those sounds. There you go. Make the sounds. Maybe just newspapers, we just need to crunch them like this and sound like pages are turning, right? So, Ephesians 1.4, just as he chose us in, in him before the foundation of the world, when did he choose us? When did he choose us? When did he become a friend to us? When was that? Okay, was it after the cross or was it before the world was even spoken? See, we were a being in him before he brought everything into being. I'll say it again. We were being in him before we, we, he, the earth and the heaven was even put into being. So that makes us pretty tight. In his mind. That's why he always talks to you. Please hear me. He never talks to you as a fallen state or sees you as a sinner. He talks to you according to the book that's written about you in heaven. That's how he talks to you. That's when he talks to Gideon. He goes, you're a mighty man of valor. Really? Hmm. Then where's the miracles? See, there it is again. See, he's equating. He's less than. Can't figure out why he's threshing wheat in a wine press. And he's going... Uh, if that's true, then where's the miracle? So we need miracles then to prove that we have a right relationship with God, or through the relationship with God, miracles and signs and wonders will follow us. Which one is it? Which one is it? Now, if I, if I wanted to hit Thursday really quick, if you pay attention in the Lazarus' account with Jesus, and Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick, he allowed Lazarus to die. What a friend I have in Jesus. Wow, dude. I mean, if you have the redemption or the, the, the value to bring healing to somebody, it would be like if Michael was struck down with a disease that I have an antidote for. 
a remedy for. And we're best friends, and I go, nah, I'm not going to give it to you. What do you think he's going to feel like? But if you look at John chapter 11, that's exactly what happened. Now you have to ask you, why would a friend do that? Why would he do that? Number one, the scripture is very clear. We're going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but death is not the end. You've got to walk through it. And that's why Jesus said, this is not unto death. Well, he fell asleep, or he went to death, and Jesus said, no, 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 no. Please hear me on this. This is a big deal, people. Most people challenge God because they didn't get the miracle, and God's challenging you that I'm your best friend. There's people in this room, I can tell you right now, you've been waiting for some stuff for a long time. A long time. And what he's trying to do is put character of faith in you. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Just because you didn't get it in the moment doesn't mean he's not committed to see the end of it. Ooh, there's a word right there. God is committed to the end of it. Just because you didn't get it in the moment of what you thought you should have it. Listen, I've been standing for some stuff for 25 years. I've realized along the way it's challenged my relationship with God because God says there's stuff in you that's kind of breaking down this relationship because you're using circumstances against me saying that that's going to break a relationship, yet I'm more committed to you than you are to me because you're reeling and railing against me and putting me on trial for the relief that's inside of me to give to you. Don't do that. And it's really difficult to do when you have a strong mind like I do because I think things true. I'm a thinker. I'm a C in the disc profile. I'm a conscientious thinker. I like to have things figured. i got to figure this thing out. But there's something about God. He says, it's not about logic, Barry, because I don't work by that. You can put a valley of dead bones in front of me, and he's able to say this, listen to the noise. Where's the noise? Listen for the sound. That's when it'll come together. Well, if you're shooting your mouth above the noise, guess what? The bones aren't going to rise. You have to shut down. Woo, you need to shut down. Listen to me carefully. I'm hearing it really clear. God has to put you as he did to Adam. I'm going to put you to sleep so I can pull the bride out. I need to put you, you need to know how to rest in circumstances so I can pull the fullness of my bride or you and me together. You're the bride. I'm, I'm, I'm the groom. So you need to go to rest. And the way he proves that, if you can rest, that you don't get, you have to be in the middle of chaos. And all of a sudden God says, you need to rest. And then he does what? Comes in and he pulls out the value of what's inside you. It's always been there. The woman was always already inside of Adam. But he had to go to sleep. He had to rest. See, we need to know how to rest. There's days ahead. You better know how to rest so that God can pull the fullness of himself out of you. Because if you don't, you will put God on trial and your days of rest will be over. Because it will make you restlessness. At night, you won't be able to sleep. You don't understand peace. But God actually, even think about it, people. This is how God, Jesus starts off his ministry doing a party favor for a wedding, unbeknownst to the people that they were out of wine, and he did it to fulfill the joy of the people, and they didn't even know he did it. Do you think God's bent on making our lives full of joy? Absolutely. Does that mean you're exempt from trials and tribulations? No. Does it mean, you know, he's going to go ask you, do you know how to rest? If you do, I'll pull the fullness of me out of you. Woo! Yeah. Well, that was pretty good. I love it when the Spirit, you know, the Spirit can just come through the room. I'm not committed to my notes more than I'm committed to the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit wants to do something, that's where we're going to go. You'll see these notes flying through the air if that's what we need to do. Just shut that thing down. I just think there's a lot of things that we think in life because I've got, I, I always say this to people, I have plenty, see, God established truth before the facts of a situation ever established itself. I'll say it again. God established truth. That means truth can't change. And all of a sudden a fact comes along in a situation. You know what happens? He goes, do you believe the truth or the facts? Because facts change, but the truth doesn't. Which one are you going to go for? Oh, you wanted it when? Really? Hmm, well, what if I said I'm committed to the end of it, but I'm going to do it my way so you get the benefit of what is really maximized here that's going to bring you the most joy? How about if we do that? But we don't hear that conversation because we're in an emotional state where we go, whoa, well, we got, this is why did Jesus do And the first thing we usually do is check ourselves to see if we've done enough right so we can connect with him to get something from him. And it doesn't work that way. How is it that people, have you ever seen people where you've been praying for somebody for like 20 years and they, they're looking for a, a resolve in healing or freedom from something. Somebody gets saved and they're fully get, they get the disease and everything healed right at the moment. You're just going, what is up with that? 
that's just like makes me annoyed. I'm just going, that's annoying. But you find out that God heals outside the kingdom, but he brings suffering within it. That's a whole other teaching. There's actually... Oof, I, I feel that. There are trials that are assigned to your destiny that aren't assigned to mine. But I'm assigned to you to make sure you get through it. There are trials that are assigned to your destiny. And I can't, I can't stop the trial, but I can walk with you through it. I'm committed to that. So what happens is that we usually get caught up emotionally in the trial, but you can't get in the, caught up in the solutions. And God's got a solution. You can do anything. God can win with a pair of twos and with playing cards and poker. And all. He can win. That's not the issue. But you'd better be in an environment. It's really important to be in places like this. It's super important because the days ahead are going to require it. You don't have the privilege to jump around and try to figure out an answer when you need one, when you should just stay in the place where you are and become the answer. Floating around and choosing what you want and having to look at the churches, look at what product I got out of Jesus I can sell to you today. Oh, so you diced him up and just kind of, oh, here's a piece of him here. You mean I got to jump around and get all that? No. You need the value of what we do in worship and what God does in the midst of us that can bring out the fullness of that seed that's inside of you because it takes that environment for it to grow. That's what it needs. It's a little late to be praying for cancer when you've never had the power to even heal a headache and you want somebody to be healed from cancer. That's a jump, people, because you have no reference for it. Oh, we didn't like this conversation, Barry. Oh, I know. It's because it's the truth. But see, if you're in with the truth and you reside with it and you're constantly in communion with it and you actually see him as your friend, ever had your friend do some stuff, you just go, God, why'd you do that? That was, that, was, that was hurtful. Only to find out they did it for the good of something that you didn't see coming. It's, it's something, isn't it? That's exactly what Jesus... You think, it's like I said on Thursday, Mary and Martha, man, they were just a little bit bent at Jesus for not coming to Lazarus. They were a little bent. You can tell by the tone, that you read the scripture, it says, well, if you would have been, that's what they thought. Because they were chit-chatting. You know, sisters, they do this, they do. And they go, well, if you would have been here. And then he, it was, it was uh, Martha that says, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, you know, the second coming and you're going to do it. Yeah, 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 like. But that doesn't answer this now. Because he said, I am the resurrection of life. She goes, oh yeah, I know at the end when you come in, everything around it. Here comes her theology, and God's going, you don't get what I'm trying to do to you for you as a friend. You don't get it, do you? Uh, oh, I'm going to go get my sister. Here comes sister. Same thing again. You would have been here. Because she's got something stirring in her gut going, <laughs> dude. And then Jesus stands there Gives her, and I, there's so much in those scriptures, please hear me, I'm just glazing over it, but, you know, when, 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 when Martha came, he gave her answers, and what happened there was, she needed a resolve in logic, how does this work, because he just answered her, but when Mary came, he cried, because she understands the emotional connection there. There's, there's a lot of stuff that's happening in those moments. But when you understand that, you just go, he's, he's ministering here at a deep level, and he's, he's realizing that she runs as a, she's a thinker, and she's emotional, and he's connecting with it at that level as a friend. That's what he's doing. And you realize after a while, there's some stuff here that we're gonna, you're going to go through some stuff being a friend with Jesus. You are. And he's not doing it to make you inferior. He doesn't need to have your misery or your calamity to prove that he's God. He doesn't need that. He actually calls you, you know, he, he actually believes that you should see him as his brother. He really believes that. He starts the prayer off with our father. He's going, yeah, you're equal to me. What? Yeah, we're, we're family. You guys okay? It's definitely quiet in here today. All right. Moving along here. So I want to begin to move into this. So it's a, I'm, I'm kind of just methodically laying this out because there is, there is, there are things that happen to us, and please hear me, I, I feel the friendship of Jesus right now. 
What he wants to do is remove the things that are at the core of you that doesn't... Here he comes. Yeah, those are the pages. Oh, yeah, yeah, the pages. Good, I like that. There are things that are at your core that skews the view of him. Because what's at the core of you determines the value of how you see. And a lot of people can cover up in the culture of Christendom with Scripture and think you're okay. And you're not. So you begin to realize there's things that are being delayed, not because he's trying to value the friendship more than it is you're not willing to release the thing that happened to you. Finally, I got a response from somebody. <laughs> it's usually like this. What? what? Yeah, it's not the failure of his friendship towards you, but it's the failure to release the things that are at your core that will actually mature the friendship because of the things that happened to you. Just because you're saved doesn't mean you made God first chair at the core of you. Because you've had events in your life that have got a lot of chairs and they've been there a long time. We, yeah, I'm a new creature, all things become new. Yes, they do, if you release everything that's at your core. Oof. Here's what I love about God. He always talks to you present, future. But we usually talk to ourselves from present, past. There's the tension. There's the creative tension. What do I do? How do I, why do I keep referencing? If, uh, da, da, da. I'm just a lowly man. I'm just a, uh, you're a king. You're the next king of Israel. No, I'm not. I'm just of the lowly tribe of Benjamin. That's all I am. That's just all I am. That's all I remember. Right? You're a mighty man of valor. <laughs> well, if that's true, man, what am I doing? The ring in the, you know. Why am I got this pitchfork throwing wheat up in the air and I'm in, surrounded by these enemies? What's, what's up with that? I don't know if he's the only one that's ever been there, but... I think I was number two if nobody else had been. I was the second guy going, uh, this stuff that's going on around me, that's not right. Where are you? Where's the miracles of old? Where is that? What is that? So what happens is, is you begin to realize there's things that the roots of your core actually will determine the views from your soul. Oh, boy. Can I just stay here for a minute? Are you guys enjoying this? Is this... Do I need to scream yell to get you going? Or are you guys getting this? Because it's usually quiet because you're thinking. I get that. But what's so powerful about Jesus, he didn't, go, he didn't go up to somebody like, in the name of myself, get up off that mat and walk. He didn't do that. He said, you just need to get up, dude, because you've been more married to that stupid mat than you have been to me, and I'm asking you to come up to me. Everything that God does, he, he says, come on up. That's what he's doing. He says, come on up. Come on up. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And see, a lot of times we have, oof, I hate to say this, but I've observed this. I'm not saying it's gospel, but a lot of times people keep talking about the testimony of what they're re released from versus the value of what they're walking into. And so they keep cycling this way. It's this present, and they go back, testimony, testimony, Jesus is so good. It's true, it's true, good. The only thing is, is you've never advanced beyond that moment. If you're going to testimony about his goodness, let's talk about what he's done in moments and see what it's going to do for the future, what's going to happen. See, that's why I have a problem with the word revival. We've got to go back and testimony again of what Smith Wigglesworth did, John G. Lake, you know, A.A. A. Allen, all the guys. Let's go through there. That's where it was at. People, return, return. Let's build it up. Refix the wall. Uh, God's not there anymore. He's just not there. The tent of Israel, they got up, the people left, and there's an imprint of a tent in the ground, and we want to go back to the imprint, and we're not following the cloud. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! And then you begin to realize, okay, I want to be in a place where I can cultivate. How many want to cultivate a relationship? It's not about, it's not about trying to get a miracle. It's just the byproduct of being him. Yeah. We, we've had it for so long. We pray, we pray, we pray, we pray. Hear me right in that. Yes, amen. It's part of the maturing process. But if you follow Jesus, he did some stuff. He did things in hiddenness. When, he taught, when, when you're in hiddenness with God, 
he talks to you a lot. He'll talk to you a lot. You're just kind of hidden, and he talks, boy, he talks. You bring him out in the public, he doesn't say a whole lot. Uh, stretch forward with your hand. Uh, rise up and be whole. Take up your mat and walk. It's just this conversation becomes close and concise. That's from somebody that's been in hiddenness. That's why you would see him in prayer. You'd see him in the places that he went. He'd come right out and go, oh, yeah, here, let me do this. Let me put this in your eyes. And then, hey, yeah, it's, it's, some of the stuff you just kind of think, first glance, and there's deep things here, but you put somebody that's blind, never seen, and you put them on their eyes, and he said, okay, now, you get up and go wash off on the pool asylum. You're going, wait a minute now, dude. This guy can't even see. What, how is he going to get there? There's, a, there's, there's something in that. I'm not going to go there now. But there's stuff that he does. You're just going, what? That's cruel. That's cruel. Or is it cool? What's he doing? What is he doing? You mean he didn't come to heal Lazarus? No. He just let death take him. That's cruel. Or is that cool? What's he doing? What's he doing? You guys are awfully quiet. Because, see, we've been trained that... I, I'm, I'm, I'm slow to answer this because people will hear this and, and I have the privilege of running it through my mind the last 30 years and I can stand on it. But when I say stuff, you go, oh, Lord, get that from? How do you get to that? And Well, it takes 30 years. And so when I say certain things and when Dr. Bob and some of the people that are of great stature and things in the wisdom of understanding and things of God, they say stuff and you just kind of backpedal and you hear it and you go, oh my gosh, what are you saying? Well, it's because they've walked through some stuff and they've actually acquired wisdom on how to handle it. And I think there's a lot of things that we have looked for the miraculous, bypassing the friendship that Jesus always wanted, as it was with Moses or his, and the people there. They said, God said, listen to his voice. Even back then, he goes, these guys know my works, but they don't know my ways. And I'm not really interested in just being a performer here so they can clap their hands. The other side of that coin is there should be so much miraculous power in the house of God that we should be stunned when something doesn't work. Let this mind be in you. God's asking you, it's okay to think like me. Think, don't think magical, think divine. There's some people that have some magical minds. They're, they're not divine. They're, they know a lot of scripture, but they have some magical thoughts. Well, what do you mean by that? They quote scripture, blah, 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 they do this, and they, some might even have a gift of prophecy, and they got some magical thinking, like, you're going to go out and you're going to be the first trillionaire. No, you're not. No, that's magical thinking. And I've seen a lot of magical thinking, but I've also been on the other side of God where I've stood in front of God, and you can do anything, I'm telling you. But you have to have the wind that's behind you from him, not you trying to breathe on something to make him move for you. That's the difference between magical thinking. I've met a lot of magical thinkers. I thought, you know what, I'll just give you a little pixie dust. And here, you go, have, go, go, go play. That's what you're doing right now. I don't, I don't even want to hear it. But as you begin to move in this, there's things that I want to bring out in this even a little bit more. I was talking about this. Let's pull it back in kind of all over the map, because I feel like there's different things that are being touched here. That's why it's a little bit, I've got lots of notes. I'm always coming here structure, but I can feel things. So there's things that God will say in the moment, but I'm going to go back to this. Uh, the roots of your core will always determine what the value of, of what you see from your soul. And you can only live from the view that you see. All right. Keep going. Just a minute, i got to i to do something super good. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to touch it now. There is a faith in character, a character of faith that God wants. Oh, this is, listen, it's one thing to know the name of somebody and use it, and it's all powerful. It's quite another to know the character of that name. I'll say it again. That's quite a thing to say, I know Rodney. Well, I don't know his character, I just know his name. I just know that when I use Rodney's name, it's just powerful, it just works, because God's committed to his name. He'll back his name up. But that doesn't mean that your character has been backed up by him. 
man, it's quiet in here. So you realize, oh, God may, the reason you have delays, he's trying to build character into you. He's going, well, think about it. If you just went around and used my name and thought you had access to trillions of dollars and you're just out spending because you're using my name, he's going, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Now, that's not what I meant that money for. Is this for me to have you spend it on my, half of my name? I actually have a character and I have things that I want to do within the realms of that framework, not you just going out splurging it just because you think you can exercise it. It doesn't work that way. So there's character. And I'm going to speak now to you guys that are just sitting here listening to this. The reason that most of you have had a real quandary with God or that it seems like there's a, you, you don't say it, but you're, you're thinking it. It's, in your, it's spinning in your soul. Why did that happen? What's the answer to that? How come that happened? What, how do you resolve that? Has anybody else ever thought that? If I'll raise my hand. I'll be the first one. What the heck is going on here? And you realize, he goes, there's character in faith. Don't be using my faith just to get what you want. How about if you want to get the character of what I have, and through that, putting it all together, when you say something, you will see something. A lot of times, God always brings you into the contradiction. Please hear me on this. I've said this, I, I will forever, and Jesus is, he had to do the same thing. As soon as Jesus is anointed, you know what he does? He's supposed to save humanity. You know where the Spirit takes him? Where there is no people. Well, what's up with that? Dude, I thought you were going to say, you're wasting time out in this desert. What are you doing out here? Because God, he himself, because Jesus, it says in Luke 2.52, they had to grow in favor. He had to grow. Listen, he had to, I thought he was a son of God. Yes, he was. Laid that down. But as a man, he had to grow in favor and in stature and in wisdom with man and with So God is watching this and he goes, I'm going to see if you got character or not. I want to know if you're true to what I've told you to do. You know what the power of this is, though? Listen to me very carefully. When Jesus, he had the character, you know why? Because you know what we do when we get in a contradiction? Think about it. Jesus is anointing. This guy came out of the skies, Holy Spirit. I mean, it's not a, it's not a bird, people. I always, I'm always enamored by that. Jesus, there's the Father, Jesus, and the bird. No, that's not. It's the Holy Ghost. He came like a dove. That means you've got to study the characteristics of a dove. That's a, that's a big teach right there. You've got to see, what's it take? The Holy Spirit, a dove is very skittish. You do quick moves, and that bird's gone. That's the same thing in the house of the Lord. You do some stuff that's quick and start shifting around, and the Holy Spirit's going to lift right off because you're not moving it with him. That's another teaching. So Jesus is here, and he's out there. He's been anointed. He's been anointed. That's a big deal, anointed. He's not in his glory. He's anointed. There's a difference between anointing and glory. Where we're going is to glory. He's anointed. What is the first thing that Satan wants? He wants to see if you've got power. That is satanic thinking to prove that you're somebody because you have power. The character says, I don't have to do that. I know who I am. Amen. Now, let's bring it home. Show me, Jesus, your power. If you do this for me, then. And he's going, oh, there's no character here. I see. Because you're demanding power. Oh, see? A little different, isn't it? a little different and then you want to play the love card don't you love me this isn't about love this is about character it's really quiet in this old baptist church i think it's this is the stuff that we we can put language to because we understand why there's delay oh it's not a love issue he's always he's always been my friend what are you talking about he's always been my friend oh you mean I'm being delayed so I can go to rest here, so he can pull the fullness of the bride out of me? Oh. Oh. Oh, that's it. Oh, sorry about what I said. Oops. I repent. Oof. All right, Mark chapter 4. Let's hear the pages turning, shall we? How many hours do I get up here? How do I go to what? Throw away the clock. I'm, from, I'm an uh, ambassador from eternity, so I don't recognize time. Mark chapter 4. Dr. Rennie brought this out in the character of faith, and I just said, you know what? The people of the world 
have things that faith in and they seem to be successful in it for a moment, but the eternal things are lost. Yet God says, and he does things inside of time so that the eternity of who he is can be established. Mark 4 says this, I want to bring this out. Verse 24. Say I'm there when I'm there. Mark 4, 24. We have two people. There you go. Then he said to them, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use. It will be measured to you and to you who hear, more will be given. Read it again. Then he said to them, take heed what you hear. Take heed what you hear. Stop. Jairus' daughter is sick. He's going to Jesus. Can you come and help my daughter out here? Is that what it was? Then somebody comes and says, hey, she's dead. And he said, stop. You know what he's doing? Take heed in what you hear. He says, only believe. So see, you got to stop it, because if this thing goes into your core, your view is going to get changed real quick. He says, you're going to shut this thing down. So you realize, okay, take heed what you hear. Take what you hear. I've got stuff that I listen to every day. I'm hearing teachings all the time. I'm hearing God all the time. I sit around, and I have something brewing me 24-7 on some things. I, if you don't have a question, you don't have an answer. I mean, it won't put a demand on the answer. You have, it's okay to question. It's okay. God doesn't sit up there all white knuckle and going, oh my God, Barry's asking me a question. No, I'm asking a question. Because I want to know. You can't get an answer unless you have a question. You just don't want to, you want to, what happens is God will say a statement. He'll say a statement to you. He'll go, thus saith the Lord. I'm your healer. And you go, amen. Then all of a sudden you get something that hits you and you go, well, where are you? There's the question mark. Okay. Now it's your choice. That question mark, if you turn it upside down, looks like a hook. And that's what it's there for, is to put a hook in you. And see, you have to resolve from the statement and making an exclamation in order to make it real to you. But the hook's going to come first. That was really good. Don't make me do that good thing again. <laughs> so here's what it says in that. It says, with the same measure you use it, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. Meaning this. To whom has the right way of hearing? To whom has the right way of hearing? To whom who has the right way of hearing? More hearing will be given to him. If you hear right, God will keep talking. If you're not hearing right, he's not going to say anything. I mean, because you'll take it and you're, you're not hearing right. You're hearing funky. Well, God allow this. His divine sovereignty, and we don't understand the mystery, and everybody's going, well, brother, I don't get it, but we'll be praying for you. I'm so sorry this happened to you. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry when I hear so sorry. I'm going, I don't think I'm the one that's sorry. It's you don't know how to understand who God is because he's trying to build character into you. He's trying to understand, make you understand. Listen, there are things that are assigned to you. Like I said, there's trials that are assigned to your destiny. You're not, you don't have the privilege to go, no, I don't want to do that. No, you don't get that privilege. You do have the privilege because everybody that goes through something is how you earn your authority. Once you're through your authority, the people will come running to you. That's what they do. But if they never run to somebody, well, I had that in front of me and I ran around. I didn't even, I didn't even touch that. I didn't want to be a part of the politics. I didn't want to do any of that because, you know, it's just crazy out there. Please hear me right. If you're not called to it, understand. But if you're called to it and said, no, I'm not going to do it, guess what? You'll never have authority in it. You just won't. So God says, okay, let me do this then. I'm just going to pull back from me doing anything. I want to see the character in you. I want to see if you can build the value of what's in that seed and bring the framework to fruition that I can rest my power on it. God only rests on things that look like himself. The only way that you'll find out who you really are, I have to throw a contradiction in front of you because the crisis reveals the core. It always does. But God says, that's not your faith that's necessary. Use mine. I am now on page two of my notes. Wow, Galatians 5, verse 22, won't even wait for you. Because you'll go back and watch this anyway. Well, you should. You know, it's, it's, um, 
it's, people don't like to hear messages usually like this because it requires responsibility. Woo. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear praise and worship and everything is going to get done in a minute. Well, yeah, when you get to the value of who you are, the difference between Jesus and us is that Jesus understood himself. He knew his identity. He just knew it. Just because he was confronted by it, think about it. I mean, come on, people, really? This created being that fell from heaven is now challenging me? I mean, think about it. But look, listen to the wickedness. He wants the power of him to prove it. And Jesus only responded by the word. No demonstration necessary. I know who I am. I don't need you to tell me I'm great because I can perform some miracle. It just, it just you, you, when you start, there's deep things in the scripture that we, we just kind of, and he went into the wilderness and was tempted for 40 days. <laughs> and there was wild beasts out there. And angels ministered to him. Turn a page. <laughs> yeah. You guys, it's, it's amazing. Galatians 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. How many bajillions of times have I heard that? Never heard of this, though. The fruit. Stop right there. Woo. Listen. On the other side of this coin, there's eternity and there's manifestations by, the, this, by your word. It's going to happen. That's what I'm trying to get all of us to do. I have to have the value of what you're carrying to complete me. I'm going to say that again. I have to have the value of who you are to complete me. I'll say it again. I have to have the value of you to complete me. See, God never made us, made us to be individuals that just go flat off in their own ministry. No, it's actually called a body. Now, what I will not accept is your goofiness saying that you're God and you're trying to do something to prove yourself that you're like God and you're being weird. <laughs> you're going to be flying through the air by the time you're done with me. <laughs> there you go. Well, you didn't love me. No, I'm telling you the truth of the goofiness of what you're trying to do, trying to connect with me, and that's not how it works because I can discern that. God wants us to understand something. Yes, we're individuals as every organ is in your body, but it takes all the organs to make the body to work. But you have to be in this kind of environment to mature the value of who you are and get the history of what you've gone through. Because there's a lot of pain. There's like shards of glass that are under your skin. And you touch a certain thing, and boy, you're in pain. And the Holy Spirit's after that. He's after that. And he's going, I have to get after that because I want the character of me and you in the fullness, not you to be mentored by this shard of glass that's telling you what you can and can't do. Does that make sense? The fruit of the Spirit, what is going on with that? As soon as you hit the word fruit, you know what that means? Time is involved. You plant any seed naturally, and it's not that God can't progressively give it to you in a minute. He can. But your jump from where you're thinking to His, that's going to take some time. So it takes a season in order to bear the fruit of something versus scriptures that are committed to memory and just speaking them. That's really good, Dr. Barry. Whew. Character is formed and conditioned, okay? Titus 2, chapter 2. It's in the New Testament, just letting you know. Titus chapter 2, verse 1. Here we go. I hope you guys are getting something out of this. Mm -hmm. Ch Ch Titus, Chitus, Chitus. Titus 2, verse 1. Here we go. You guys still awake? Yes. Somebody was telling this joke. I was listening to him this morning. I think it was Bill Johnson. He said, uh, <laughs> should I tell it? Because yes. <laughs> I've been both in this joke. He said this, uh, this pastor had died and went to heaven. And uh, when he got to heaven at the pearly gates, there's Peter standing there. You know, He's checking everybody in. This guy that's up in front of him, he's got this really loud shirt on, <laughs> jeans. And he says, who are you? He goes, yeah, well, I'm, I'm Tim Jones, and, you know, I was a pilot. He goes, okay, thank you for telling me that. He goes through the book. He goes, 
bam, there he is. He goes, oh, here's a silk robe and a golden staff, and here you go, welcome. Yeah, okay. So he goes, I'm a shoe in now. So a guy comes up and presents his name, who are you? My name is Brad McKinney. Brad McKinney. Oh, there he is. Oh, okay. Here, Brad. Gives him a cotton robe and a wooden staff. He goes, well, wait a minute. This guy was a pilot, and I was a pastor for 30 years, and this is what I get? And he goes, here's the difference between the two. When you preached, everybody slept. When he flew, everybody prayed. Oh, Lord. You said you wanted to hear it. I told you. <laughs> Clever. Titus chapter 2, verse 1. But as for you, teach the things which are in agreement with a sound doctrine, which produces men and women of good character. Oh, there's that word. Whose, identi whose lifestyle identifies them as true Christians. Listen to what he says. Here's what you need to do. Older men are to be temperate, dignified, sensible, sound in faith, in love, and steadfastness. You know what he's saying? Go follow somebody that's seasoned in God. It's not, it's not, it's not the guy that has the little bar stool and the smoke ice, you know, dry ice floating on screen with a cup of coffee and he's got his Bible in front of thousands of people. I can tell you, guarantee you, there's no character there. Because you need the effects in order to get the message across. That's harsh. It's the truth. There's no depth there. No depth. So as I, I remember one time, I'll be personal, can I be vulnerable with you for a minute? Because I, I, I have to be real with you so you'll be real, real with me. I'm not trying to be, I, I don't need to teach. I don't need to do that. But when you get a hold of God that's like fire, all you want to do is give the fire away, right? You just go, la, 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 la. But I realized something back in the day when he was teaching me some things. This is what he said. I was actually in the throes of what happened to my uh, first son. And he had died in the night. And I, was, uh, I had taken a shower. And I was coming out of the room and he says, what I'm about to tell you, they will not hear you because of where you're at in your age. But he said, when your hair turns gray, they will listen to you. He was giving me depths of things that were beyond that people didn't think I had the understanding or had the stature to carry it and say it because I'm too young. But because culture identifies usually wisdom with somebody that's old, that's when they'll listen. Because you've been through some stuff. Well, what that told me was, I'm going to have wisdom from the ancient of days, even though I don't have gray hair. But when I'm gray hair, they will hear. Finally, what? How you hear determines how much more you're going to hear. So there was years that I, I knew I was carrying answers. I could have said it, and they would listen to it, and they go, you don't even know who you are. You're, you're not a part of this. How, how, come you, how do you know that? It sounds, I mean, this guy, I was labeled as, he's really dangerous. He's really good, but that dude's dangerous. He says some stuff that just makes you go, you can't be like God. I mean, there's no way. I mean, uh-uh. And I'm thinking, no, I heard what I heard. See, when you stand in the character building of laying your sons in a grave, and you're representing the Son of God. He's building character into you. Because you didn't have your son's back does not mean he's leaving the assignment. I know, I've walked through it. I actually have gray hair. I don't know if you've noticed that. It's kind of <laughs> a little discolored a little bit. But anyway, following this thing through, you're, you're realizing, and so, and James, and I'll start closing, my first closing, because I, I promised I'd be out of here by three. <laughs> you awfully quiet. James chapter one, verse three, be assured that the testing of your faith, that means the testing of your friendship. Faith is a person, it's not a thing. Faith is a person, it's not a thing. Faith is a person, it's not a thing. Well, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yeah, it pretty much lines up with Jesus, doesn't it? He's in the unseen, he's got all the substance, 
you better hang out with him so you can get to the now of him. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When you commune with somebody that's in the unseen realm, you're going to get the value of what's in the unseen. Again, I'm telling you again, you need to be in this environment. You don't have... Can I say this, Rodney? I don't know if I can say this. Yeah, I'm going to say this. God never meant us to be watched on a TV screen and applaud us. He didn't. He meant us to come together. That's what he meant. The worship that was stirring in here, you keep going, this house will begin to fill because they can feel the presence of God. That I, I'm, I'm, I, I was telling Nor that I go, we don't need another teaching. We don't need another teaching. You guys are so taught so well here, you have the most brilliant teacher there is. You don't need to be taught another thing. What we need to do is we need to gather what's already been taught. If you could just gather what you already now have been heard, you don't need to i got to have it one more time. I need to hear it one more time. Okay, I get it. There's growing up in there. But there are certain levels that I've seen where people need to go somewhere else. They're trying to gather more information, more information. And nobody's cultivating the reality of the character of God. And the character of God begins to move amongst a company of people when they say, we just want you. We just want you. That's all we want. And I'm not trying to get a pastor or somebody behind me to teach me once again because the glory of God does not require a man or a woman. It does require God. The anointing can go. I can kick it into the anointing and we can go. And we'll have the Holy Spirit come in. Amen. I'm not knocking that. That's all good and that's all perfect. I love that. I'm the first guy in the pool. I'll, I'll jump in before you. I'll run you there. I'll be there. I'll be the first guy that's on the floor looking at this going, these guys are 90 degrees, that's weird. I'll be all challenging you and I'll get more power. I'll suck this room so dry, so full of God. He also knocked me out so I can't stand up. But what I realize, it requires me to do that. I don't want to be me doing that. There's another level in God that requires, I just want you. And he goes, huh, finally. Finally. Because the anointing requires a person the glory does not. That is so good. Yeah. The anointing requires a person the glory does not. That is just the splendor of God, period. You actually, you know, think about it, people. I mean, we've heard the story a bajillion times. Go in the room. Just wait. Wait for me. Okay, I'm just saying, we're locking this place down right now until the glory comes. How many would stay? Okay, five, six. <laughs> Everybody's going through their schedule. Let's see my daytime. I gotta go Tuesday. I gotta go here Friday. No, nope, I gotta. I gotta make this meeting. And I'm, I'm not. I'm being a little bit facetious with it, but I am bringing a reality. If that's commitment, see, you've got to commit. You have to commit. What has happened is we've gotten so familiar with this routine, we don't believe that this routine can be actually be broken into another realm that's never been seen routinely. That's what it is. You've gotten so familiar with me coming up here and talking that it's really good what you say and the depth of what you're saying, but the reality is I'm trying to get you out of this routine into something that you've never been into before. Because there's unknowns in God that need to be known, but it requires you to go in the unknown. That means you have to do something that you've never known to do to before. That's what that means. So there's something, when you have somebody that's you know, wanting the fullness of God, you're going to have to change it up. You just don't have the privilege to sit there anymore. You're going to have to do something a little different. You're demanding something from God that you're the same thing. And, you know, we, we call that doing the same thing over. And, yeah, it's going to change. That's called, you know, you know, insanity. But you're just realizing, no, you've got to do something different. It's like this morning I go, okay, Phil's here. All right, we got a guitar. Where's AJ? Okay. No AJ today. He's going to go celebrate life. Okay, AJ, that's, you're forgiven. You, you can go do that. Amen. <laughs> I love those. I love those guys. I just love, I love that family. Anyway, um, but then Phil ends up going on the drums. And I'm going, see, there's a part of him that I've never heard before. It required something different, but it fulfilled the sound that was necessary to the assignment. But see, he was willing to change out of that. I love that. I love that about people that are talented like that. I didn't know that. I thought Phil was just an excellent guitar player. The dude's David. No. He's Phil Knight. I mean, he's Phil Collins. He's the drummer. He's got the spirit of Phil Collins. <laughs> so you, you just realize there's things that get drawn out because certain cir circumstances requires a different part of you to come forward. How many people in here have trials that are on, they're in right now that you feel, I need to get out of this. I need, to, I need an answer. Is anybody like that? Okay, at least four of you. 
You, know, you guys are all walking walk with Jesus so well. I need to sit down and listen to you for a minute. So what happens is, is God's trying to bring something forward. There's things that are happening, and maybe you can't see the value and the fullness of it, but we can. Because we understand it takes all of us to get there. I'll, I'll put the weird ones in check as a side note. Okay. Second closing. April, am I doing okay? Okay, thank you. <laughs> huh? Did I? Oh, uh, yeah, let's do that. See, we need everybody. <laughs> hey, it's going to keep me in line. James chapter 1, verse 3. Be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. And let endurance, say endurance. endurance. Say it again. Endurance. Say it again. Endurance. Okay. That, the endur that let endurance have its perfect result. Oh, you mean there's results that are based on endurance? Oh, shoot. I thought everything was miraculous here. I have to go read this Bible again. And let endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking nothing. Say lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. Say it again. Lacking you, know what the, you know what the evidence of faith when it's fully manifest? Lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. Are you guys okay? Yeah. The maturity of faith, the, the, the fullness of what it is, is I lack nothing. I lack nothing. I lack nothing. You come here and don't tell me about your need. You just come in and you go, I lack nothing. You know what that tells me? Your faith is mature. You took the seed of Christ because faith is Christ. The fullness of faith is what? I lack nothing. I lack nothing, Nora. I lack nothing. I lack nothing. You know what you're saying? I know him. I actually answered the prayer that he prayed in John, John chapter 17. Make them one as we are one. Seek the kingdom first. And is what? Then what's going to happen? Oh, so what are we praying about again? I'm lacking nothing because if I take faith and turn it into this thing I thought was substance and you turn it into that's Jesus, guess what happens? You lack nothing. Well, how about that? Now you know what it feels like being God. Do you know that God wants you to feel what it feels like being Him? No, do you really understand that? Think about it, people. I'm going to say something, and you can stew on this a little bit. When God first made man, He went to the soil, did He not? And He did what? He breathed into him, right? The second time He went, man, He put a seed in him. That's a different level of intimacy. Shut that down. Maybe next time. Woof. That's some stuff there, boy. That tells you how much of a friend he wants to be to you. That's a different level from intimacy. That's a jump from just breathing on somebody to being actually intimate with them. That's a jump. See, you got to think, deep, deep waters require, you know, this kind of understanding to bring the depth of God in here. Because he's not going to reinforce your shallowness. He's, you know, he's going to go, oh, let's, let's just take this to the full, full thing here. All right, let's go a little bit further. And we'll close out. Fifth, fifth closing. Here we go. I'm going to say this story. We're all familiar with it, and that's the problem. We're familiar with it, and so we don't see the value of it. So I'm going to bring a value to it on a different way if I can do that. Can I do that for you? Daniel chapter 3, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let's go. I just all just ran together. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let's go. You guys want another joke? I don't because I don't have one. Anyway. <laughs> exactly. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Chapter 3 of Daniel, verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Of course, the story is, you know, he wants to bow before the idol of himself and all that good stuff. That's very paraphrased. 
in that, if that is the case, okay, listen to it carefully now. Now, these guys are going to prove they actually have character. Watch this. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Stop. Because they're not saying he's going to do it. It says he's able to. Which means is if he doesn't, that doesn't mean he will not complete it just because it didn't happen now. Meaning, if we get fried and turned to ashes, so be it, as it was with Lazarus. Sickness to dead, dead, so be it. But if the character of what he's trying to build into me, that's why I can say he's able. But the character of how I know him, he's going to do it. I can't tell you how he's going to do it, but he's going to do it. Keep going. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. He's able, but he's saying he's going to deliver us. I don't know if it's going to be now. I don't know. People have told me when they hear this story, well, sounds like they don't have enough faith, so he's kind of, he's, he's, he's kind of a little bit wishy-washy there. He's kind of floating around. I don't know. About that. But if not... Because I know the character of my king. But if not, I know the character of my king. But if not, I know, my friend. He will deliver me. The method and the process that he takes me through to get the victory, I leave that to him. The value of who I am in him is resolved in me. I will not raise my voice against him. He is God and God alone. You, Nebuchadnezzar, are not who he is. But I'm a friend of him. As Pilate was a friend to Caesar and thought he could wield the power against Christ himself, Christ said, you know, you wouldn't be here unless my father established you here. So you got to do what you got to do. But I'm a friend of God because I have the character. I have faith in the relationship of as a friend Not the strategy of you against me. I don't have no faith in that. The fire that you wickedly stirred up against me, that's actually killed your own? You better pay pay very close attention to what you've done against this king and my friend. That's what he's saying. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods. I'm not going to bow to the government that says I have to take this shot. I don't need to do what you tell me what to do. That you can control me because you open the door a little bit, that door comes off the hinges and they're going to take you over. I'm not belittling if you had it or not. I'm just telling you, I personally will not. The character of who he is to me is between me and him. What you try to do to me, you're going to get the consequences of my friendship because I'm with him. This is a fortitude that needs to be understood. That's not very loving, Barry. I'm telling you right now, that's what needs to happen because as much as love is there, so is justice. You cannot have full love without the fullness of justice equaling what love is. And you have to be bold in the days ahead. The church, it says, and a great boldness came upon the church. Millions of people bowed to a little needle, a little piece of metal that had fluid in it, and they bowed to that. They bowed to that. Unbelievable. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with saying that. I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm just telling you. It proved to me and our family and others that did not bow to that, you've got character. I'm not saying you don't have character. I'm just saying you may want to consider in the days ahead. They might come something else with you. Let's see what you have to say about it. This government is not like in the really perfect order. I don't know if you've noticed that. It's a little off. A lot. But if not, let it be known to you, O King, O government of the United States of America, that the right one to be established in that office will be according to the prayers that I pray. Not by your perverted ways, you think your rights, and the friendship that you have with the demonic realm. 
the sacrifice of babies, the perversion of the gender, all the things that you do, you do not, you do not know the sway of the spirit that you're under. And you will not leverage that against me. The righteousness and the purity of who I am in him and him in me will establish the governance of this thing called the kingdom on this earth. It's not about trying to preach another word. It's becoming the word and saying something. There's an authority in that word when you understand that. I'm preaching to the atmosphere now, not to you. And those that have the year to hear what the Spirit is saying in the days ahead, there will be a great boldness that will come upon the church. For those that can hear it, more hearing will be given to you. In the days ahead, you will see the righteousness of God be established. Sodom was destroyed because there is not righteousness. There is righteousness in this nation, therefore it will not be destroyed. It's not going to happen. And God will put you in places that are in the total contradiction of what you're saying in order to establish the authority of who he is in that place. Hear me, O king. What you do against me, you're doing against God. The strategy you work against the people, if it's not in the strategy of God, woe to you. That we do not serve your gods, nor do we worship the golden image that you have set up. See, faith, when it has a purpose, it stands. That means when you're in Jesus, it stands. Faith is not a substance, it's a person. So when I say faith, is, you know, it, does, it stands for purpose. That means when you become like God, you have the right to feel what it feels like being God, and you stand. When you've done everything, you stand. You don't back down, you go forward. You hold that position. doesn't matter what came against you. See, when faith stands for a purpose, it will never back down. It just won't do it. This church is still here. Righteousness still prevails. It still goes out. Character is formed through and shaped and formed by the things that you go through, not the things that you avoid. The seeming delay to the promise that we have felt at certain times, and some of us are going through it right now, the seeming delay to the promise was a building of the character of faith in order to receive the weight of the promise. You've got to have the character to hold on to it. Now, I can kick into prophetic right now, and I could go to and start prophesying to individuals, but I'm doing it as a corporate level. This is for us collectively. Because a lot of people want an individual word to isolate and see if it'll come to fruition, to see if their friendship is actually really true. I'm telling you, God's already committed to your friendship, whether you commit to him or not. Woo! Okay. Okay. What am I saying in all this? It's a good start. It was a good intro. It's a good intro. It was a good intro. Because some things I said can actually be drilled down and really get into some depth. And it requires that for what's coming. I've said stuff that I said is going to happen. It's going to happen. But in order for it to happen, you're going to have to have the framework for it to happen. Just because you heard about the land of milk and honey, woo! Oh, yeah, I was going to go in there and just take it. Whoa, there's some giants in there. What the heck? What's going on here? Why, why would you... What? That's what we do. This is crazy. God was supposed to heal me, and he didn't. He was supposed to stop, and he didn't. What, ha what happened here? Why are there giants in this land? This is milk and honey? What? I have proof of it. Look at these grapes. That was crazy. Oh, well, <laughs> that dude was 10 9, man. What? 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 <laughs> you don't even came praying in the spirit, you're just going. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me close on this, just in that thought, because somebody needs to hear this. Why are there giants in the land? What's going on here? What's going on here? What's. What, what? I thought you overcame. What? A... Oh, boy. God is just, he's good. At, I don't know if you know this about He's really good at what he does. He just is. Doesn't make me happy all the time, but he's just really good at it. 
I'm going to I'm going to read this to you, and then we're going to close. Oh, is that okay? Yeah. Everybody's going, please. <laughs> Don't tempt me. There's one amongst us. So we can get it here. Just bring it up here. I heard beepings. That's what it is. You guys still with me? I'm going to bring it up because I'm just going to sit there and go, not going to sit here and go, oh, he's just making stuff up again. Okay, why were there giants in the land? What's going on in the framework of what's going on here? What's going on? I want to know. I mean, that's quite, a, that's quite a feat to go across the desert, and then all of a sudden you finally arrive and go, more obstacles? Really? I mean, the, the burning sun and stuff, you know? What's going on here? But it's funny that the clothes that they're wearing and the shoes that they're wearing are growing, but you're not. You ever thought about that? How is it the shoes and the clothing they're wearing can sustain the value of what they are? They don't wear out, but you're wearing out by what you're seeing, see? The clothes don't have eyes. They just receive the presence of God, and they just, it sustains itself because anything that's in God's presence doesn't go to death. Oh, oh, okay. Just saying. Numbers 13. Verse 32. Remember what I said, how you hear determines how you're going to hear. More hearing will be given to you. If you don't hear right, you're not going to hear more. Numbers 13, 32 says this, And they brought up an evil report of the land which they searched in the children of Israel, saying the, Lord, the land through which we have gone to search it, is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof. What a nice day. Have a nice day, everybody. Just have a nice day. Isn't it fun to be out of Egypt to go into this one and just get chewed up? Isn't that cool? Oh, boy. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Dang it. They're even bigger than us. I mean, it's just a whopping problem. This is a big problem. I got news for you. Here's a little gold nugget for your back pocket. The bigger the problem that you get in life from God is evidence that you're growing in God. See, the size of the enemy determines the size of who you are in the spirit. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, Anak, which come of the giants. Listen to us. Listen to me. See if I was telling the truth. As we were in our sight. As grasshoppers. So were we in their sight. How you see yourself is how the enemy sees you. How the enemy perceives who you are is how you see yourself. Oh, king, you think you got it going on. I'm not a friend to you. Because I've seen myself, I know who I am. No matter the outcome, he's good for it. He's going to show me all the way through. He's going to do it. You guys all right? Yeah. And how you see yourself is how the enemy sees you. You either play into his language and you listen to it and you shrink yourself down to a grasshopper knowing these guys are great stature. I'm just a grasshopper in their sight. Yeah, you're going to get wiped out too by that thinking. You're done. Finished. Done. But if you don't give yourself permission to feel what it feels like being God, no problem. Again, this environment, you've got to be in this. You can't afford not to be in it. You guys okay? Yes. How you see yourself is how the enemy sees you. I love it. I didn't even get into page three of my notes, but that's okay. 
Okay, everybody stand. Everybody stand. You guys get anything out of that? Yeah. You did? That's good. That's intent. Mm -hmm. What you heard was something corporately. For the value of what's happening in this moment, it's to the body, it's to the atmosphere. There's some things that were said today that are to this state, to this nation. But if the wholeness of the house is broken and it's fractured, how can it carry the weight of a nation? The problem with this is, is it'll keep going. That's the problem. When you get in the eternal realm, God wants to continue to stir this. It's an interesting place to be because God will always touch the people in the house first so that they're whole, so they can have the stature to handle the weight of what he's bringing next. I'm not, I'm not um, seeing it unless it's done that way. You can't have the glory of God sustained on a broken company of people. It won't work. You want to be whole and be here not because you have a need that needs to be met, but you have the, the invitation to be as he is. And he's, he's, he's your friend. Let's do that. You guys okay? Okay. I think I'm done for now. Um, for those of you that are still watching online, we want to make it available for you to be able to give into Barry's ministry. And so um, you can do that online. You can do it by texting. And there's a little drop-down menu that says speaker. And that's what you need to press on when you do that. Uh, okay. Yeah. And uh, those of you giving here, uh, just check the little box that says speaker. And um, let's just pray right now, shall we? Yeah. Father, we're thankful. We're thankful for Jesus. And we're thankful for your extravagant grace. Your extravagant grace that even though Jesus was infinitely rich, Yet he divested himself, he impoverished himself for our sakes, so that through his poverty we might be made wealthy beyond measure. We thank you for that. And now, Lord, the wealth that we've received right now from Dr. Barry today, Lord, we plant into this ministry, and we say it is good seed. Mm -hmm. And we thank you, Lord, to bring forth now the harvest of that. And... Uh, to those of you watching at home, I will, let me bless you. The Lord bless you. Yes. And keep you. Yes. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and yeah. give you peace. And the Lord bless you with the revelation that you are the permanent address of God. Amen. 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 All right, let's give Dr. Mary a big hand.